this might be a tough decision right now. My team well, did just absolutely um, NFL games that were like, right. whoa. I actually don't have a lot of mixed feelings. Uh, welcome to Scrum Tone. Uh, we have another guest here on the League of the Wings. The League of the Wings. The League of the Wings. It's recorded. Oh, oh my like, gosh. You want to put on a theme again? Yeah, let's do it. Immersive. We did campfire. We've done kitchen. Let's do. Wait, how many are there? There's like eight. Hmm. No, I do all eight until. Oh, this is too small. <laughs> too small? We've done that one. We haven't done this one. Okay. So these are the only three that are for two people. The other ones are for groups, so it's yeah. not going to work. This is the last one. Oh, there! I realized that there's always a Zoom logo in the background. There was a Zoom logo like in the pumpkin of the last one. And then oh, the really? Zoom, yeah, and the Zoom logo is... Wait, I, I can't. I don't see it. The, it's, on, it's in the middle of us. It's a silver thing in between the plants. It's like right above your head. Like, it's. Wait. Oh, okay, I get it. I. It's hard to Interesting. Get it. Oh boy! Oh boy! So you want to tell you want to tell the fans what just happened, the news that you just found out because it's kind of breaking. It was um, an hour ago that uh, Carson Wentz got the coronavirus. Um. Well, he was placed on the COVID list, which could also mean close contact. But just the way the Colts have conducted themselves, I doubt it. I think it's a positive. And he's unvaccinated, so he's going to be out for the final two games, which we could still get in after losing those games. But it's like a lot of tiebreaker stuff. And, you know, we always want to control our own destiny against the Raiders and then Jacksonville in in Jacksonville. And so a reporter asked yesterday if they were, after all the coronavirus news that had hit the Colts, all the different people that aren't going to be able to play against the Raiders, they asked they asked Frank Reich if, you know, they were going to try and call Philip Rivers, who is retired, and see if he would want to play. And at this point, once hadn't t- got tested positive yet. So Frank Reich said, no, I'm confident in the players we have. But then a day later, Carson Wentz tests positive. And a reporter by the name of Zach Kiefer says, I wonder if they're going to reconsider that now. I hear that they've already started to discuss it. That would be insane if he actually comes back. Like, imagine if he, like, does better than one somehow. Like he throws for like five touchdowns and like the Raiders. It'll be another full situation. Could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> imagine if Rivers takes them to the Super Bowl. And uh, you know, I like the prospect of it because it's not like we have any new weapons on the offense that Philip Rivers isn't familiar with. It's still T.Y. Hilton, Michael Pittman, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines as like the big core, Mo Ali Cox, Jack Doyle, if Jack Doyle is playing, I don't know what's up with his injury. Um, same weapons. I really don't think we got much of anyone else in the postseason last, last off season. I mean, so I think he could do it. Um, I think it would be whoever has Jonathan Taylor in fantasy though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're going to get, they're going to get the carries. Jonathan Taylor needs to pop off basically. Mm-hmm. Um, even Naheem Hines might be an opportunistic pickup just because maybe they'll just run the damn ball the whole game and just have Philip Rivers hand off, which I'm sure he doesn't mind. Um, Jonathan Taylor towards the end of the season with Philip Rivers popped off as well. So Philip Rivers has no um, issue with taking a step back and letting the running backs do their work. Um, in fact, Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines did a really good job in the receiving game with Philip Rivers as well. So that's a little fantasy tip if that ends up working out. I doubt it. I would say it's more likely that Texas rookie Sam Ellinger starts, at least against the Raiders. Um, he has played some snaps through the season. I think there was a game where, I think against the Bills when we were destroying them, 
Um, he got to play some snaps. He was uh, whatever. In the off season, he looked. Eh. I I haven't really liked the look of him overall. I was actually a Jacob Eason fan for a while uh, during this off season before they released him. So yeah, that's the update on the Colts. And I think I mean they still you. they still have a lot of other players out. So I'm not confident about the Raiders at all. I mean, without the other players getting COVID, I think you could get away with like average to a little bit below average to beat the Raiders just because of Jonathan Taylor and your, your like, strong supporting cast. But with I mean, the, there's still five days left for yeah. other players to get COVID right now. Yeah. If Jonathan Taylor still stays healthy and you're running back, it's going to be a challenge because isn't that your entire O-line also out as well? Yeah. I mean, did you see New Orleans versus Miami last night? Did you watch any of that game? I saw a couple of highlights here and there, but I saw the Dolphins destroyed the Saints or controlled most of the game. Basically, because Saints were down to their third string, which is rookie quarterback Ian Book from Notre Dame, which is essentially the same situation, except I don't know what the overall Saints situation is, if they had any other players out, but they tried to depend a lot more on Alvin Kamara, and Alvin Kamara just couldn't get anywhere. And uh, I don't know if they were down offensive linemen or their starters but regardless like Miami controlled that pretty well and their edge rushing they sacked Ian Book eight times and the Raiders have really good edge rushers so um, it's not going to be an easy feat by any means against the Raiders uh, despite their I think they're having they have a losing record now no they're eight and seven they still have a lot of talent and if the Raiders offense is still healthy I think they're a threat you know with Josh Jacobs and Derek Carr and all those other guys. Darren Waller. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but I believe in the Colts. What? Gross. Okay. Um, I guess we can, you can move on to our projections for last week or this yeah. past weekend. I mean, I just have to get, uh, excuse me. So I went 12 and 4. And that's 75%. And then Titus went 10 for 6 in predictions at 62.5%. The first one that we both got wrong was San Francisco versus Tennessee Titans, which was a really close game. But honestly, this surprised me a lot that the Tennessee Titans were able to keep the 49ers this close. Because I thought with Debo, uh, Kittle, um, Ayuk going at it, they would be able to put up some serious points against uh, the Titans. And Debo did get going a lot, and IU did get going a little bit too. But it was just a passing battle, and it came down to the end. It just came down to the end that 49ers gave the Titans too much time towards the end, and they just couldn't stop A.J. Brown, which was their kryptonite. Tennessee is a well-coached team uh, under Mike Vrabel, so their season hasn't completely collapsed after Derrick Henry, which I didn't think it would. I think it would stumble a little bit, but they'd find ways. Offense still hasn't looked really clean with Ryan Tannehill, but regardless, their defense has looked a lot better than at least last year. Their defense was not that great last year, but this year it's definitely taking a step up, and they're able to really – do a good job, especially against with all the weapons the 49ers have and put a lot of pressure on Jimmy Garoppolo, who did not have a great game, despite a pretty respectable season, all things considered. You know, they went after a quarterback really early. I mean, they traded up after all. He's had a really respectable season, but I think he's injured now and going the next game, Trey Lance will be playing. So, Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. But yeah, and then Derrick Henry is coming back. If they make it to the playoffs, right? Or is he coming back? Um, right now he it's as early as week 18. So he can play the final week just to clear the rust, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not confirmed. Nothing's confirmed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see what if he comes back or not. Green Bay first, Cleveland Browns. This was a, a lot closer game again than I thought. I thought the Packers were a destroy the Browns just because of how bad the Browns have looked just of how good uh, the Packers have looked. But I guess you can't destroy everyone in this league uh, 24-7. Devontae Adams looked really good. He had two touchdowns. Um, and Aaron Rodgers just keeps adding to his MVP resume. I have to look up his stats 
both had very good games. Aaron Rodgers had 70.6 completion percentage, 202 yards, three touchdowns, uh, 115.1 rating, which is not like an absurd game, but it's still it's still a decent game that can keep him in the running. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers had a good game, I would say. Baker Mayfield was terrible. Browns defense ended up giving Cleveland a chance towards the end, but Baker Mayfield, I, I think he was playing through an injury, but four interceptions regardless, that's, that's just bad. Every Browns fan that I know is saying cut, cut Baker Mayfield, cut him so, so they don't want him on the team next year. Um, wow. And Devontae Adams' uh, stat line was 10 receptions, 114 yards, and two touchdowns. And yeah, in the beginning, they couldn't stop him, but yeah. last half, it was not great for the Green Bay offense. Mm-hmm. Colts beat Cardinals on Christmas Day, um, taking care of business. It was a very ugly game just because of all the injuries. Jonathan Taylor had a really great run to begin with, but um, as our offensive line continued to collapse, uh, he wasn't really getting much anywhere. Our offensive line still did, like, decent. Jonathan Taylor was able to get, like, a couple of really good plays after the really big one to start off the drive. But it's it's really hard to do anything against, you know, a defense that has – what's that guy's name? Jones, Chandler Jones. Yeah. And the linebackers that they have, it's just – it's hard to do anything when your offensive line is that obliterated. So Wentz had to come in clutch, basically. Wentz had to do something to really prove that he's the quarterback of the future for the Colts, and he did. He probably had the best throw in the league. I mean, there were a lot of other throws that weren't great. There were some underthrows, some overthrows, where I think we could have put up <sighs> – I mean, he was under pressure a lot, to be fair. But I think we could have put up two more touchdowns had the drives gone the way we wanted to, had he executed on those passes. But it came down to that one throw, and he delivered when he was absolutely needed. And so that works for me, you know. We got the win. Sorry. Wasn't there a fake in the game, too? Fake? I thought there was, like, a trick play. I could have – I could completely be wrong. I thought I saw on TikTok like there was like a fake. Uh, oh yeah, uh, a punt, a punt. Yeah, it was a uh, yeah. The punt returner was faking out the, like the gunners and was going to one side of the field so that the guy who would actually get the ball had all the room on the other side of the field and he got like across the fifty on that play. But Kyler Murray was not looking great. Um, Coast defense really balled out. No turnovers other than a safety, but. I mean, our pass rushing was better than I'd seen it basically all season, especially from Quiddy Pay, probably the best uh, game of his career. Forced Buckner did pretty well, swallowing up runs uh, during that game. Um, backup safeties really came in clutch. George Odom and I forget the other guy's name, but he was like he was like backup to the backup basically. Because um, we have a we, we not only do we have a lot of safeties out due to COVID, but that's been an issue at the beginning of the season after. Julian Blackman uh, got injured for the season. So, and then um, EJ Speed as well, replacing Darius Leonard. He did good. So, yeah, that's my rundown of that game. And now for a rundown of the Eagles, um, getting a slow start, I feel like it was a very slow yeah. start against the Giants. Um, yeah. Kind of the same was against Washington, too. But once they got going, once that running game got going, it was very hard to stop. And uh, Giants just look bad in general. So, yeah, it was like pulling teeth. It was uh, three three at half, like entering the third quarter, and it could have been six three, but we missed a field goal. Dan Hurst just looked god awful. I mean, his his receivers and running backs weren't catching the ball to save his life, so that it, that added to it. But he just was looking terrible to begin with he just wasn't making correct reads overthrowing balls and stuff we we just couldn't get any uh thing going but once the second quarter came along we just dominated the game and it it should have been that way throughout the entirety of the game but if if we do end up going into the playoffs which it's looking like we are we just have to win out and we we enter the playoffs which i don't even know if i want to see the eagles in the playoffs just because of how just because of that bad first half 
that we had. I, I just don't think we're going to be able to beat te- good teams if we can't play complete ball against uh, bad Giants teams. Um, but I, I liked how he finished. Jalen Hurts looked uh, decent. There's a few passes that I didn't really like in the second half, but he pulled it around and he led his team to victory. And I'm I'm loving our how our defense is playing as well. Um, we got a pick six and we basically dominated the Giants on the on the defensive end, at least throughout the entirety of the game. And I'm more worried about our offense actually pulling things together too. And it looks like Miles Sanders may be out for the rest of the season with a fractured wrist, hand, something with his arm uh, around his hand area. That's not a really big, big issue because Ryan Howard Howard and Boston Scott can do most of the load, but it certainly does help a lot. Yeah, a lot of good storylines, especially just like coaching and grit through with these teams uh mainly the teams that eagles care about in the draft colts miami and the eagles themselves um there's a point where they're all top 10 draft picks and now they're all in playoff positions so yeah um i'm sure there's mixed feelings about that but colts started off one four of course and now they're at eight they're at nine six eagles I don't even know how far down they were, but I think it was like one five, right? I believe so. Let me let me double check that. Yeah, and then uh, I mean, I think it has to do with like schedule, honestly, because I still have yet to see the Eagles beat a team uh, that is like noteworthy. Like whoever they run into in the playoffs is is this really going to give them a challenge. I think your best wins are against the Saints. Yeah. Saints maybe and the Broncos, yeah, which are just like kind of middle of pack. But um, it's really going to be interesting to see with all this momentum how they fare against. Um, I would also say a red hot Dallas Cowboys team, um, which will really decide things. Um, and you could even clinch the playoffs next week actually. Mm -hmm. And then Miami went through what was it like a seven game loss streak to a seven game win streak or eight? Yeah, seven and seven. So that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. All these teams just putting those narratives behind them. I mean, especially Tua, you know, people were saying that he was going to get traded at the trade deadline for Watson. That didn't end up panning out. And then he's just been balling ever since. So mm-hmm. we started off. Yeah. The Eagles started off two and seven. And then, yeah, it's just crazy too. Like just everything that you said. All of them and- coaching of the year candidates, I should say. Brian Flores, Nick Sirianni, Frank Reich, probably more than anyone else. But yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I, I have to say about that. The last thing that I want to say just quickly is I just don't want to see the Eagles in the playoffs for a couple of reasons. Because with the Cowboys, like if we do get in, then we're most likely playing the Cowboys, and I don't want the Cowboys to destroy us in the playoffs because they will not, like, they're never going to let that down for, like, the rest of their lives because, like, they're still clinch, they're still holding on to Super Bowls that they won in the 90s and playoff games that they won decades ago or a decade ago. Classic. Um, and like you said, we haven't beaten any good teams, so whatever team we do face in the playoffs, we're going to get destroyed. Yep, 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 yep. Rams beat Minnesota barely. Matthew Stafford had a terrible game. Rushing efforts from backup Sony Michelle helped out, and Cooper Cup had yet another 100-yard game. Minnesota, it was so close for Minnesota. They really could have done it, but that's been the whole story all season. Um, it was just too little too late, I guess. Madison had a kind of good game. He had a touchdown. And Dalvin Cook, I mean, Madison has been a great – replacement for when Dalvin Cook is injured and or on the COVID reserve. Um, so they have, at least they know that they have a decent backup running back and they just have to close games. Yeah. So at this point we were all in uh consensus about who would win those games. So in order, Green Bay, Colts, Eagles, Rams, but then we had a little bit of a um, arguments about the Bills and the Patriots because Patriots gave the Bills a beating earlier um, while only letting Mac Jones have four or five throwing attempts. But um, weather conditions were right for Buffalo. I said Buffalo personally. I thought they would get them back. You said Patriots would double down on it and keep their uh, – I think they would clinch division with that. I'm not sure. But, yeah, Buffalo, they did it. 
they got the they got the win. Josh Allen had one of the best games of the season, especially considering that two of his best wide receivers were out in Emmanuel Sanders. Or was it Emmanuel Sanders? It was it was two. One of them was Cole Beasley, but then maybe it was Gabriel Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a great effort. Stefan Dix had a good game. Um, who who's that tight end? Dawson Knox, I think, had yeah. a good game. Singletary. Yeah. Uh good Bills win overall. Yeah. Uh he Allen got me 31 points. I think the re- most of the reasons why I did pick Patriots was just because I was mad at Josh Allen just because of how many turnovers he had. And I just wanted to pick the Patriots out of spite of the Bills. But, yeah, it was an all-around dominating performance uh, by the Bills. And the Patriots aren't looking as good as they once were three or four years ago. It was uh, like back-to-back losses now against playoff teams, Mm -hmm. teams that they could definitely run into. But uh, I don't really – I didn't really have any hopes for their – playoff ability basically i thought they were a really good regular season team while it while they're going through that whole win streak when it comes down to it, i think there's still just like a lot of young and new players on that team uh defense i mean i think could still probably get them a game in the first round maybe but overall i don't expect them to get to like the conference championship definitely not super bowl um especially with mac jones he still has lots to learn i think um, he, he got torn up against the Bills, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, um, Tom Brady with no weapons, essentially, other yeah. than Antonio Brown, who just got back, beat Carolina Panthers, who uh, I think Bank of America Stadium is the Carolina Panthers stadium. That that stadium erupted in fire, Matt Rule chants. So it's <laughs> not just it's not just Matt Nagy. It's also Matt Rule, both Matts. Uh, other than Matt LaFleur, of course, who's been nothing but astounding. Did you see that the Buccaneers also uh, picked up Le'Veon Bell as well? Yeah. Did he have a good game? I I don't – yeah. I have I know idea. Ronald Jones did and instead of uh, Leonard Fournette because he's out. Yeah, Ronald Jones did good from what I saw. I don't think Le'Veon even played. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, yeah, it he's just following like the Super Bowl teams, you know. He was on, <laughs> he was on the uh, Chiefs last year, and now, now he's with Antonio Brown. Yeah. He saw the light. Wait, it says my f- week sixteen. Yeah, he had, he had two rushes for a negative one yard. Let's go. Probably because yeah. they're blowing him out it was late later in the game. Yeah. <coughs> Then the Jets, in a really close game against the Jaguars, uh, ended up beating them uh, 26-21. Jets, you know, they have they have some they have some good players. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson was running over them, in fact. He got a rushing touchdown. He had some good scrambles. Uh, it looks like he's just getting his confidence on, in that team right now. So nothing but up for the Jets, I feel like. Yeah, that, that was a crazy run. It didn't even look like the Jaguars were – uh, trying to tackle him on that play. It was like a 50-yard run, and he was dodging people and stuff. Yeah, dodging people against the sideline, which is like how, but regardless. Um, Falcons came back, I think, against the Lions. Apparently, it was like very close. Lions should have had it, but, you know, that's how the Lions have been all season as well. Amon St. Brown, Amon Ra St. Brown, I think, mm-hmm. is the name of the rookie wide receiver who's been looking really good for the Lions. Uh, especially with uh, DeAndre Swift out, so their rushing game is taking a bit of a fall. But they've gone, they've gotten some juice in the passing game. Uh, I don't think Jared Goff has been playing either, so it's a guy named Tim Boyle, Matt Ryan, um, and that team just managing to get some wins. I think they're still in playoff race at seven and eight. The chances are the chances that um, that they actually will get in is very low, but. They they are still in it, um, which is very quiet pretty, season for them. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just been a very interesting season because you at moments they look like the bottom five team, like bottom five five fifth team, like in that range with like the Jets, the Jaguars, and stuff. And then they put on performances where they look like they're the middle of the pack team or middle of the pack of teams. So it's it, it seems like a very uh, up and down season for the 
Falcon. Yep, yep. Houston beat Chargers and probably the biggest upset that we both got wrong. Yeah. I don't know. Was this bigger than them beating the Titans? I would say so. Really? Yeah, because yeah. I, I know I know the Titans record, but Titans are also in the division, you know, they get to have all that experience, blah blah blah. And uh I just feel like the way they beat the Chargers was so much different. Like they really had Herbert struggling and they were running all over them. Like it was a dominant victory, I feel like, especially in the running game from Rex Burkhead of all people, which is just random, you know. Whereas yeah. against the Titans, it was like I don't know. I didn't I didn't think it was like dominant necessarily. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like I don't think they had the Titans figured out by any means, but mm-hmm. and also it's just like what are the Chargers' excuse? You know, Houston has always struggled against Derrick Henry, maybe, and so they didn't have to deal with that because the Titans in that last game. But Herbert has been looking great this season. I would I would think. So it's just like, I don't know. I guess Mike Williams was out, but he hasn't really been a factor at this point in the season. Ken Allen and Josh Palmer, I feel like, would be enough. Uh, Austin Eckler was out, but his replacement, Justin Jackson, did really well, I think. I, I just don't understand what happened on Herbert's side. And mainly yeah. the defense, which has been, honestly, really great with uh, Bosa and all of them. So mm-hmm. Yeah. The Chargers are a very odd team this year. Um, they, they either play, like... Super Bowl champions or Super Bowl caliber teams or they play like this and I saw Houston like beating the Chargers pretty bad I think like around the third quarter or whatever I'm like oh that's pretty interesting but they're probably the Chargers are probably just going to come back and beat them but then I saw the final score I'm like dang they actually lost pretty badly too yeah Um, and at this point I think I think Chargers (laughs) and Ravens like both out of the playoff picture right now and that's very unlikely for either of them to make the playoffs i mean earlier in the season that would have been like a weird thing to even think about the charges and Ra- one of the charges and ravens not making the playoffs i don't think either i don't think both of them could make the playoffs at this point i think they're battling for that last spot with the dolphins so and the browns technically i'm not sure who else but yeah, and that division's like really close as well. Huh? It is. Bengals beat Baltimore. Um, just talking about those teams, basically. Uh, Joe Burrow had a record game, basically, over 500 yards, a bunch of touchdowns. He was even throwing late in the game when you know they really should just be running out the clock. But he said last year when playing against them, they didn't do the same for him or something like that. So. <coughs> It was personal, essentially. And uh, apparently a Ravens defensive coordinator said something about Joe Burrow. By the end, by the time he hangs up his cleats or whatever, he he won't be like a gold jacket sort of quarterback, which means that he doesn't think he'll ever be a Hall of Famer type quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Joe Burrow was like, I just don't understand why he said that. It just seemed unnecessary. And so yeah. what he did was he tore up his offense. I mean, his defense. So, yeah, very very personal and that man that that group of young talents and Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, like that is that is unfair. Yeah, yeah. I think they still have to battle some consistency issues, but once they once they really figure that out in the next couple of years, they might be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it's very exciting to see these like new developing teams coming up. Um and then I want to crack a mistake that I said earlier about the Chargers. For some reason, I mixed them up with uh, this division with the Bengals and Ravens and Steelers for some reason. I don't know why I mixed that up. Um, but we guard that comment uh, from a few moments ago. And, yeah, it was just – it was great. To, it's kind of good, great to see that kind of storyline play out for Joe Burrow. Um, yep. And this is the second time – that they destroyed the Ravens this year as well in similar fashion, which is very odd too. Um, Joe Burrow didn't have as many yards and like the storylines weren't there. Uh, the first game was mainly a defensive game, but the first game that they played the Ravens, the Bengals had 41 points, uh, Ravens had 17 points, and then this one was 41 to 21, which was a weird coincidence to have. Where... Yeah, I think this game is a different quarterback. So Ravens, Ravens probably could have had it close if they still had Lamar Jackson, but mm-hmm. I don't know. 
it could have been a really high scoring game, really fun one, but yeah, injury issues have been basically ruining the Raven season, which, you know, started off very respectable, all things considered, but Bears versus Seahawks, somehow Bears won it. I don't know how you got this one. I really thought Seahawks had it, especially the way the game started with that throw from Russell Wilson. And then I think it was like a 50 yarder, maybe a 40 yarder to DK Metcalf that went for a touchdown. I just felt like it was all in Seahawks hands, but they have just been not great. You want to, you know, you want to know uh, why? Why? Three words. Oh, big, yeah. Big dick Nick. <laughs> Nick Foles, that's right. Nick Foles was there. When Nick Foles is playing, he's unbeatable. You can't beat Nick Foles. I had no idea he was playing in this game, to be honest. But <laughs> that, that's that's how they won this game, solely because of Nick Foles. Yeah. Uh, Chiefs beat Pittsburgh very dominantly. Um, it was like, I think they're at 28, 24 in the first half. Mm-hmm. which I, I thought was crazy. And then the Dallas game happened. And I was like, okay, that was nothing. Pittsburgh just couldn't get anything going. It was just a similar situation where like towards the end of the game, they just kept throwing at Najee Harris and hoping he would do something. And, you know, Najee Harris was putting on like a clinic using hurdles and all of that. Like he was looking good, but because of the offensive line, it's not like he could really ever get anywhere. He would just like be pure strength, making his way towards the first down. Uh, to keep Pittsburgh in it, but at the end of the day, they only got 10 points. So um, I think there was a missed field goal. could have been 13. But And also it was funny because on TikTok, everyone was making fun of the Steelers, the one Steelers guy who was celebrating at, this, at the end of, end of the second half because Patrick Mahomes threw like a corner fade or whatever from like the 30-yard line and the defend, uh, one Steelers defender like defended it and he started to like celebrate like he like he did his job for a single play and everyone was mm-hmm. memeing, memeing on him because they were down like 24 by that point and everyone was like why are you celebrating when you're down by this big of a deficit that's just such a Steelers thing to do that's funny mm-hmm. same thing with like Chase Claypool and mm-hmm. you know celebrating when there's the talk is the clock is ticking so yeah. And that also happened with Robbie Anderson amongst the Buccaneers, too. The Buccaneers were up big, and Robbie Anderson got, like, a first down. And he, like, celebrated. Like, he got pushed out of bounds, and he was at the Bucks like, in the sidelines. And he did, like, that. Like, he did the first down celebration. And you could just see Antonio Brown, like, laughing, like, eating it up because they were up so big. And he was just laughing at the – Damn. Vegas – I, this is one of the only predictions I got correct. Vegas beat Denver 17 to 13. Um, and I was pretty confident about this. I, I think in this matchup, it, it can be considered a coin flip, but I still like how Las Vegas has been playing just like a little bit more than how Denver has. I feel like Vegas has more respectable wins at the end of the day. Uh, Derek Carr is still doing good. Defense still going, doing good. Not that there's nothing going for Denver on their team, but with, with their quarterback situation, it's just like hard to really have any hope in that. So I, I honestly don't know why I picked Denver. I, I guess I think the excuse that I gave last week was because of Trey and it was kind of a coin flip, but yeah, I don't, I, Denver's just bad. Uh, then you got Washington versus Dallas, which was the biggest blowout of the season, probably. Yeah, it was uh, 42 to seven before the start of the third quarter or the, at the end of half, which was insane. But it was like 28 to 7 with like 10 minutes left in the second quarter. Um, this game reminded me of the game like in 2010 when the Eagles with Mike Vick, Deshaun Jackson and McCoy played Washington and we were up by like the same margin at half. I think it was like 42 to 14 going into half. So um, it just reminded me of that game with the Eagles, and it, it's just – they just got demolished. Washington did this game. Yeah, they got embarrassed, and even with, like, their bench, with, like, a couple of defensive linemen were fighting each other. Um, they're known to be friends, though, apparently. They went to the same school, and uh, they just had a little a little fight, you know. 
the guy said, you know, you ever have, if you have a brother, you understand, like you get in the fights, you make up, it's whatever, but still not a good look uh, for the team morale, regardless. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of a bummer because there were a lot of high hopes after they made the playoffs last year. It just hasn't been delivering. Yeah. And this basically just uh, kicked them out of play, playoff contention. Not that I, th- I didn't think uh, necessarily that they would make the playoffs at all. Um, but this kind of just sealed the deal for them. You did in the months. beginning of the season. You thought they'd win the division in the beginning of the season. Yeah, that is true. I guess, <laughs> <laughs> I guess the more of when I realized that the Eagles had a chance, I guess it was more of like the last third three quarters. I was like, ain't no way Washington's winning. But yeah, and at the beginning, I definitely thought Washington was winning. Miami, New Orleans. This was also just not a good game from New Orleans. Defense, I thought, was playing great, though. Remember that one of the Miami touchdowns was, in fact, a pick six off of Ian Book. So at the end of the day, New Orleans held them to 13 points. So I thought that was pretty good with how good Miami has been recently. But, uh, you know, when you have a third-string quarterback who hasn't played, you know, a real – a real game in the NFL. It's just, it's just hard, mm-hmm. you know, and a bunch of people on offense are out. You really only have Alvin Kamara who can't really get anywhere because everyone knows that he's going to be the guy uh, who's going to be getting those attempts. It's actually his most attempts in this, in a season and the season hasn't ended. Yeah. So. Um, that's crazy. And then it's the first time in history where a team lost seven in a row and then won seven in a row, which is pretty crazy, but. The seven teams that they did beat in a row, they they have a combined of 36 wins. So it's not too, too impressive, the wins that they are getting. But still impressive nonetheless to get seven straight wins, regardless mm-hmm. of the teams being played. I guess it's on to the MVP race. I'm going to keep it short because uh, I don't think there's too much to talk about at this point. Tom Brady had a meh game against Carolina, and I think I would have kept him in the number two position had he – you know, really torn up Carolina, especially considering Carolina isn't, like, the best team right now. And, you know, even though he is, he's without weapons, you know, that's just what an MVP is supposed to do. And uh, he got one touchdown. He didn't have any turnovers, but, you know, just wasn't a crazy game. His uh, passer rating dropped. I just don't think it's, it's, it's just not enough. It wasn't yeah. enough to really be up there in the top two which we, you know, we thought he would be. A little look into the honorable mentions, though, before we get into the top two. Uh, Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes are the two leading in the honorable mentions with plus 200 odds. Uh, So Josh Allen's stock rose, Cooper Cup's stock rose, and Dak Prescott's stock rose. Matthew Stafford fell off. And, uh, yeah, that's basically where they are. I, I doubt any of them will win MVP, but, you know, it's a, it's interesting to see who gets into the discussion. There is one, like, Patriots reporter who is saying after that performance, I think Josh Allen is the MVP, which is, like, dumb. But, you know, he hasn't been performing like that all season. He's had very up-and-down season. Don't think he's an MVP candidate, at least the top three. But, uh, you know, I'll give him fourth or fifth. Whatever. As for the top two, skipping over Tom Brady, Jonathan Taylor, Rose. He didn't have a great game in fantasy, at least, um, because he didn't get a touchdown or anything like that. I don't think he was a big factor in the receiving game, but he got a lot of carries and muscled his way to some first downs. I think it was a respectable performance, and a lot of people are like, oh, he struggled after his 40-yard run. But it's like if you take all out everyone's best plays, then obviously they're going to look bad, you know? Like you have to still factor in. Jonathan Taylor had a really great play that put Colts up in prime position to at least get the lead. So I think that had a lot to do with it. You know, if the Colts were going to win this game, they had to get off to a quick start because there's no way they would prevail late in the game with all the injuries. And, you know, they just don't have the endurance at right now. Um, so Jonathan Taylor really set them up. I think, um, I think that was important and he still is leading in basically every rushing category I can think of. So yeah, he's number two, Aaron Rodgers, number one, he had a three touchdown game. He was starting to fall off a little bit in the last half, but he just doesn't turn over the ball. He plays 
not to say he plays it very safe, but he plays it very precise. When he looks good, he looks really good. When he looks bad, it's just like, okay, but is he really doing anything to lose the game for his team? Not really. It's just, you know, he's not, it's, people just aren't executing. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of his success can also be attributed to how good the defense has been throughout the season, giving him pretty good field position and all that uh, rushing game to start the season, at least was really respectable. And so I had a lot of criticism against him, but I think in the last games, he's really just put up a lot of volume, just big numbers, um, just plays basically that no one else can make. So especially in this game, I think some of the, some of the plays were just insane from him at the start of the game. So yeah, he's still my number one. Um, he's definitely the favorite in odds right now. Yeah. And I think everyone's book at this point. So he's probably going to win. Yeah. And he had, he's a quarterback too. So that probably yeah, that, automatically that, that, that helps. Him. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Um, and then with Jonathan Taylor too, it's interesting to see because he's like getting Derrick Henry. Um, Derrick Henry kind of snaps too, and it's, it's yeah, honestly not even close. <laughs> I don't think people realize just how much Derrick Henry is used, but Jonathan Taylor is cl- like up there, especially mm. compared to other running backs. But Derrick Henry was like, I don't know how much Jonathan Taylor was averaging. Hold on, I can look. Mm-hmm. He's basically averaging twenty on the season. And his mm-hmm. wins, where he's used the most, he's averaged, like, 23. Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry was, like, up to 30 on average. So, and... I mean, yeah, it was wild. Derrick Henry, and, you know, it was working for a while, but obviously yeah. that was the criticism. He would get injured at that rate, and he did. So, yeah, we'll see how they deal with that once he comes back. It's also crazy, too. It's just how much of a head Jonathan Taylor is of everyone else with rushing yards. He's like 500 yards above everyone else, like in the top five rushing yards. I think the closest is like 1,080 or something. And uh, Derek, Derek Henry is still in the top five. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that was before this weekend or after. But no, he's probably still in the top five, definitely. Yeah. But it's just crazy to think that someone who hasn't played in a couple months is still in the top five for rushing, which is absurd to, like, think about. Yeah, Derrick Henry was averaging 28 per game before he got injured. Damn, that's insane. Like, how? And uh, Jonathan Taylor's average during wins, which is where he rushes for over 100 yards, is 23. Mm. So, there you have it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I guess we can move on to prediction I, i'm kind of uh sad because i don't really have that many big upsets that i picked but i may change down the line if i like two or three ahead that i see that i want to change i may change an upset but most of mine aren't really that too big big of an upset i mean i have a couple upsets but yeah uh we'll get philly, into it. We'll get into it. philly versus uh washington i have the eagles just because I'm an Eagles fan, and Washington is just – Washington after last week is looking like in shambles. And Yeah, I think the way Eagles dominated Washington the first the first game, how they ran all over them, mm-hmm. um, you, really, you really just saw that Washington just wasn't prepared. And it was interesting. It was like, okay, going to this Cowboys matchup, let's see how they deal with the run. And then Ezekiel Elliott had like – two touchdowns in the first half so at that point it was just like okay they really haven't been able to fix that I think at this point it's too it's going to be too late for them to fix that um I just don't think uh they'll be able to stand a chance yeah oh and then a quick stat too from the Cowboys game that I forgot to mention is that Dak Prescott is the first quarterback to throw a touchdown to a running back a wide receiver a tight end and an offensive lineman all all in one game. And then I just wanted to shout out too that another offensive lineman did get another a touchdown last weekend too in Lane Johnson against the Giants. I, it there was, was a third game. as well. I'm oh. not sure who, but it was yeah. three big guy touchdowns on Sunday. Big weekend for a big offensive lineman. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just I think 
the Eagles, Eagles are starting to get into their groove and hungry to get into the playoffs. That is, I think they're a better team than Washington, and they should get this one. But uh, Rams versus uh, Baltimore. I got the Rams winning. I got the Rams winning. Um, is Lamar is Lamar still injured? Do you know? Um, each week it's looking more promising and promising. Like they kind of entertain the idea that he'll come back that week, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh nope, he's not coming back. And neither will Tyler Huntley. So we're down to Josh Johnson. And it's just mm-hmm. like, well, I never, I can't really trust what the coach is saying anymore or what they're saying about his progress. But right now they're saying he's going to come back, which, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But for that reason, I had the Rams just because of Jackson. I just don't think, I don't, I don't think the Ravens were that great of a team. I think they're like a little bit above meteorocracy with Jackson, but I just think this lowers it down a lot by them. And I just, I just don't feel confident in them. Uh, I have Baltimore. I Ooh. think they're in a must win situation at this point in the season, given that they're eight and seven and out of playoff picture. I think they're at like eighth or ninth seed. Not too sure. But yeah, I think it's a lot more dire for them to win this game than the Rams. And so they're going to play like it. Um, yeah, that's just my humble opinion. That's interesting. I thought you would pick the Rams just because of um, – or because of being a Matthew Stafford fan too. He did terrible last game. I have no yeah. reason to believe that he'll do any better or any worse. But, I mean, it's going off of, you know, the state of things as they are. And uh, I feel like the Vikings should be a team that you shouldn't have that much problem against. Matthew Stafford found a way. And uh, the Ravens' defense is no laughing matter, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a close game nonetheless, but here's our, I guess it's the first dispute of the the, uh, the week as well. Yep. Um, Tampa Bay versus New York Jets. I got uh, Bucks winning. I, I, just, I can't see a way that the Jets beat the Bucks. I can. I think Tom Brady uh, is without a lot of weapons. So that's going to significantly hurt their chances. But, um, you know, they're a well-developed team top to bottom, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Also, Shaq Barrett, I think, is out for the rest of the regular season, which is going to be – I mean, you have to apply quarterback pressure when you're playing against rookie quarterbacks. I mean, that's just like rule number one. Uh, I mean, against every every quarterback, obviously, but especially against rookies, it's really important. So I can see Jets winning, but – I don't know. I think Tampa Bay still is going to want to fight for that top seed. And uh, I think Tom Brady, Tom Brady is definitely going to like try to play lights out. So um, Jets, you know, they're not really playing for anything at this point. They're just playing for pride. But at the same time, you know, they could be trying to tank for a better pick. I think they have the same record as Houston right now. So like, why not just try and go and, you know, get as low as you can. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> It seems like that's the story of the Jets towards the end of the season, every season, it seems <laughs> like. Um, but honestly, now looking at it, I, I keep forgetting that Chris Godwin's out and Brady is without his uh, main weapons, too. I keep forgetting about that. So honestly, now that I'm thinking about it more, more I can see the Jets uh, making an upset with uh, – Zach Wilson, the best running back in the world after that long run. But um, Mike Evans might be back. That is something oh. to look at, though. I think he was only supposed to be out one game, but oh. we'll see. Uh, Tennessee versus Miami. Honestly, I was debating on picking Miami, but the reason why I didn't pick Miami is because Miami hasn't proven to me yet to be a solid team. And I just think that Tennessee Titans are starting to get hungry more hungry for the playoffs and just wanted to kind of seal the deal with the playoffs. And I, I think they kind of found their groove um, after winning last week. And I just think that the Titans, even though it's going to be a close game, they're going to find a, a couple more plays to beat the Dolphins. I think it's the other way around. I think Titans are going to play pretty conservatively, you know, really trying to end the season, knowing that they're going definitely going into the playoffs, I think at this point. I, I can't see a scenario where they miss the playoffs. It just doesn't make sense. I think they're going to play conservatively as to not lose any more players than they already have. You know, still getting a win, but Miami is going to play the 
complete opposite. They're still playing for that playoff spot. It's not secure yet. They just got to win out and they have it. Like they control their own destiny. It doesn't come to, down to tiebreakers if they just went out. And so knowing that they're going to, they're going to try and do that. Um, I just feel like that's kind of the state of these last two weeks. It's just like who has more heart and more investment in these last two games, which is really often how it comes out to be, you know, teams that end up with who are like better in seeding towards the end of the season, they end up playing a lot worse because they're playing conservatively. They're just looking at the playoffs at that point. Teams that are definitely not making the playoffs, you know, they play a bit worse. You know, we still have Texans and Jets winning games, but still, I think when we get closer and closer, we'll see them, you know, like taking a step back. I think that those are just like pride games, just like we have to do this for our pride. But now that they have those games under their belt, it's just like, okay, we're just going to try it. Like, you know, take it easy a little, go into the next season, looking comfortable with their positions. Not that I think Houston should be proud of anything right now, but Jets, I think, you know, they're in a better state. I agree with that, too. I'm sorry, I was just getting my thoughts together there. I kind of want the Dolphins to make it just... just, just For the story. Up. Yeah, like starting one and seven and then making the playoffs. So like, I don't think that would ever be repeated, at least in the near future and in the next, like, five, like... I don't think it has happened. Yeah, I don't think it's ever happened, and I don't think it will ever be repeated if they make the playoffs. Um, It's just a crazy story to be told. And also, just after missing the playoffs last year at one and five, it's just like, just give it to them, man. Just give mm-hmm. them it. Just give it to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got the Patriots versus the two and 13 Jags. I got the Patriots. I, I I don't think they're going to lose to the Jags. I just I just don't think I just don't think they're going to have the capability of losing three in a row. Well, I mean I guess they did earlier this season. I, I don't know how many games they lost in a row. Didn't they start off like one and four or something? I, I have no idea, but yeah. They started off pretty bad, but I just think that they're going to end the season a lot more strongly. And I I just don't I just I don't think they're going to lose the Jags. Yeah, I think this might be even a statement game for Mac Jones and even Bill Belichick. They might even dominate too, just to uh, show a point that they're still in this league or they're still in contention. Are they going to? Do you know if, how the playoff picture is going to look? Like, do are they going to make the playoffs? Who? Uh, the Patriots. I think they're in it right now. They just okay. they don't have the division. I think they're really playing for the division. I think they're okay. in a comfortable spot to at least make a wild card. But I think these are still must win games because I mean home field advantage is who doesn't want that? You know. Yeah, I haven't uh, really re- looked at the AFC picture, um, so I don't really know uh, who's like in the wild card and who's played for division spots. I need to look at yeah, they're so. they're just behind the Colts because they have the same record, but Colts won the tiebreaker. So okay. Um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I I don't know why, but I I well, I do know why, but I just really love this season for that because there's 27 teams still eligible in the playoffs. Um yeah, it's it, it's it's so interesting to watch. I think it's a bit less than that at this point, but yeah, yeah. I guess that was before last weekend started. Um but yeah, I didn't it's yeah, a lot less, less now. Um, yeah, and I'm sorry that I keep, like, muting my mic. I just keep blowing my nose. So that's why I keep, like, going, like, that way. I don't want them seeing me blowing my nose and hearing it. <laughs> there are eight teams eliminated right now. Eight teams? So, 32. Um, Seahawks, Panthers, Lions, Bears, Jaguars, Texans, and Jets. That's still, like, 24 teams that are still... Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Especially, like, this late with, like, two games left. That's, like, I feel like that's unheard of. I don't remember the last time that there was 20-plus teams so eligible for the playoffs this late into the season. Yeah. Did um, you know the Raiders are 3-0 in overtime this season? Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Random little fact. Speaking of the Raiders, Colts, Raiders. So, I guess it's not too random because I think if this game goes overtime, Raiders win. I do not trust the Colts with their injury problems, having the endurance to go through overtime, similar with the Raiders, I mean, the Ravens, um, after going to overtime, it was basically over, you know? Yeah, I think Colts have to get off to an early start, really dominate that game, and then hope Raiders don't pull off a Ravens-level comeback, which 
I doubt they will. I don't think they have the capability right now. But at the same time, they're going to be playing for a playoff still. So, oh, God. Uh, I can see us losing this game. We've gone two. We've gotten really good wins this season. We've been racking them up basically back-to-back almost. So, yeah. I think it's about time for us to take a hit, especially I think it's just going to happen given – the injuries, but uh, as long as we don't lose to Jacksonville, I'm fine. Wait, do you have do you have the Raiders winning? No, I have Colts. Okay, no, okay. I was going to say, but uh, we both have the Colts winning, and I was I'm not confident not... in it, though. <laughs> it's just that at this point, I've picked the Colts every week, so, like, why deviate from that now? Yeah, that makes sense. I was really close in um, picking the Raiders, but I, I just feel like I wouldn't feel right if I said we – uh, we got to believe in the Colts earlier this podcast and then pick the, the Raiders to win. Yeah. Um, but I I, th- I think the Ra- uh, Colts can pull, pull this one. I didn't think they'd beat the Cardinals, but they found a way. Or maybe the Cardinals beat themselves, but, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. We got Kansas City Chiefs versus uh, Cincinnati. I was really close to p- picking Cincinnati, not going to lie. but No, yeah, that makes sense. I have the Chiefs just because they're more consistent right now. Cincinnati, yeah. they'll have the type of games that Joe Burrow just had, but then against especially a team like the Chiefs, it's just like they're not going to be putting up the same level of performance, you know, mm-hmm. at least not back-to-back weeks, which is why I think it'll probably be a first-round exit, if I'm being honest. But yeah. I, I uh, Chiefs – Chiefs want that bye. They want to clinch that bye more than anything else, especially after how the season started. Just like, you know what? Let's let's end the conversation right now. We are the best team in the AFC. No question. So, yeah. I was just about to say that. I was like, the Chiefs are still fighting for that bye. Ain't no way that Patrick Mahomes led Chiefs is going to want to lose and not get that bye. Mm-hmm. So that's why I got the Chiefs. Um, Bears versus Giants. Uh, I picked the Bears last week. I'm going to pick the Bears this week. Giants are just looking terrible. And if is, I don't know if Nick Foles is playing. Is Nick Foles playing this game? If Nick Foles is playing, then it's a lot. I don't want to choose the Giants just because he did that. <laughs> Should I do it? Giants beat Nick Foles. How fun would that be? You won't know balls. I'll do it. <laughs> hey yo. Boom. Ooh, wait, hold on. Is this that- is a coin flip for me. I don't care yeah. how many. I don't care about the Chicago's last win. They're yeah. a bad team. So are the Giants. It's just going to be a terrible game, and I hope no one has to sit through that. We'll uh-huh. see. Soldier Field. We'll see how many people show up in Chicago on that day. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's going to be many showing up. Oh, and- in the cold with your team doing so badly against another bad team. It's just like, why even show up, you know? Honestly, I would go just to see Nick Foles, honestly. Yeah, but you're an Eagles fan. We're yeah, talking about true. the I, Bears. I, ain't no way. Um, but I, I just looked it up. If Nick Foles is playing, I think it's it's up in the air, so he's not, like, search and starter. I think they're still making a game-time decision. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you would – you're not playing for anything. So if you have the chance to play your rookie quarterback, play your rookie quarterback. Give him some more experience. It doesn't make sense. Why would, you, why would you go with a veteran when you're not playing for anything? Yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. And you got San Fran versus Houston. No, we have Buffalo versus Atlanta. Oh, whoops, sorry. Uh, Buffalo versus Atlanta. I got Buffalo. Yeah, I Buffalo. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty easy. Uh, yeah. Atlanta might put up a fight. I could see it being close, but I think Buffalo is in a good position to take this game and look good going into the playoffs. Maybe with home field advantage, we'll see how New England does and the uh, and the season. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I I would say that this is pretty much a lock, but after last, after Houston beating wait who, who the heck did they after Houston beating the Chargers last week, I'm not too sure anymore. I got San Francisco beating Houston, uh, confidently, but not as confidently as I was after. The Houston beat the Chargers, but I I just think the the 49ers are playing for playoffs and they're very hungry. So I don't I just don't think they're going to lose to Houston. Um, yeah, I mean we I guess that you could say the same about the Chargers last week, but I just think 
49ers are a more rounded team and they have more experience playing with each other just like the guys um the past few years or like know how to play with each other so I think they know how to close games and not let the Houston Texans come in and beat them so that's that's why I have uh 49ers let's look at it like this Houston was playing at home against the Chargers, which is a California team. So they had to travel quite a distance to play them. Houston beat them. San Francisco, a California team, had to go all the way to Tennessee to play the Titans and lost to them. Now Houston has to come all the way to California to play San Francisco. I think it's in San Francisco's favor just off of that. Uh, If that's a trend or a tell at all, may not be. I could be wrong, but also I just think San Francisco is overall the better team. Um, I I project George Kittle to have a way better game than he did against the Titans, uh, which might be the difference maker. I agree. I agree. I I feel like I might even up it, and I feel like this is going to be a great fantasy week for Kittle and Samuel, and even maybe Ayuk too. Um, But I just think they're going to get – not Ayuk. Come on. (laughs) I don't know who has Ayuk, but not Ayuk. I do. <laughs> Why do you have both of them? Why would you yeah. have this? Why would you have two wide wide receivers from the same team on your I on your fantasy? Team? Yeah, it was. Uh, I grabbed Ayuk because I think yeah, Samuel was out for like a week or two, so I oh, picked okay. up Ayuk because I think I Ayuk was going to be that main receiver for them while Samuel was oh, yeah. out. But then I forgot about Kittle, so he he took most of the reps that week. <laughs> um yeah. but I, I still have Ayuk just because I mean he, he got me 12 points uh last week too. So that's still pretty decent as a as like a flex. Yeah, he's um, been doing better. Yeah. So I I just like having oh man, 12 points at a flex, I would puke. Not on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my team, yeah, you I wouldn't even be talking. My team got 260 points. The past yeah, two weeks. My team was bad last week. Actually, I actually ended up doing better. I yeah. thought I was like the the first week I thought I was like bad, but second week I ended up like hitting 120. Um and I had a point more than Brendan did. So if we had played in the semifinals, I would have been and uh oh. I like how that looks. <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting way to end the championship now though. The stakes are high. We also play terribly whenever we play against each other. Like yeah. sub 100 weeks. So it's going to be interesting. It, this is going to be the week where both of your teams are going to like dominate and it's going to. No, be- I think so. I think I'm. I think the way things are looking, my teams are prepared to just pop up. They're so all go- excited. They're all. Both of your teams are going to get above 350. DeAndre Swift's coming back from injury. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's going to be a very interesting weekend for the championship but we got uh the chargers first denver i was debating on picking the denver broncos but last week they showed me why i should pick the denver broncos and i picked <laughs> the chargers <laughs> and i just refused to pick the broncos uh sorry not yeah. sorry trey um yeah simply not yeah. sorry at all I, feel I like think they, yeah. I think they play the Chiefs on the season. It's just like they have no chance to make the playoffs. Technically, they still do, but it's just like you have to play Chargers and the Chiefs. It's like yeah, you could get one win, but you're not winning out. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's a bad look for them. And uh, I have no faith in the Broncos right now. Once I they get like a it. once they get a good quarterback, it's going to be interesting. They may have like a a Bengals level resurgence because they do have like good good mem a good core they just aren't the players that are really going to make a huge difference you know yeah and i feel like they're similar to the Atlanta falcons where they have a chance at making the playoffs like you said but they're probably not because Atlanta plays buffalo and just because of their record it doesn't look like they're going to get it they have it oh we got the saints another dispute uh carolina versus the new Orleans saints I got the Panthers winning, and Tyus has the Saints. And yeah, if Saints can get literally any of their quarterbacks back, other than Ian Book, Trevor Simeon, Taysom Hill, 
Uh, Jameis Winston, I don't know what his progress is. I, I thought he was supposed to be back by now. I don't know, though. So they can get any of those three guys back. I think Carolina has just been looking that bad. Like, they will get beat because New Orleans defense, they come to play. Alvin Kamara, when he has a, a, a decent situation, he'll, he'll put up numbers. I believe that. So, Carolina, without McCaffrey, without basically all the things that make them great, leaning on a rusty Cam Newton right now, it's just like, it's not a good look for Carolina. I got New Orleans all the way. All the way. Um. I got the Panthers just because I was – this is probably 90% because I just wanted to pick an upset, and this is probably the most confident, like, upset. If you, Even if you – if you even consider this as an upset. Um, I think it would be. Yeah. I just wanted to pick an upset, and this is, like, the most confident upset that I think may happen, and I was just kind of thirsty for it. Really? This. Yeah. This one? Yeah. I can name, like, four of these. Like which one? Detroit over Seattle. That could literally happen. I I might even change my pick. Who knows? I think Arizona over Dallas. Do you think that's a an upset right now? Just off of how Arizona's playing? I mean, I guess it's a little bit of an upset, but it's not like a, a huge upset. Okay, fine. Let's not go with that one. Let's go with Minnesota over Green Bay. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. Um, Minnesota did beat them earlier in the season, um, and they did really well against Stafford randomly. And so I'm not saying they're going to be having Aaron Rodgers have like three interceptions or anything, but you know they could give him a little struggle, especially like the way Aaron Rodgers was playing towards the end of the game against the Browns. Like it's not impossible, and that offense is still great from Minnesota Vikings, no doubt. Dalvin Cook might be back. Could be a good situation. For the Vikings, if they really still technically have a chance at the playoffs. Um, so there's that. So what, we're at like two and a half, <laughs> two and a half uh, upsets. Um, I would say it is not insane to say the Bengals could beat the Chiefs. I think that is more reasonable than um, Carolina being the new one. Yeah. And then, yeah, Miami over Tennessee. Really? So. Dang. I think those are all better predictions to make than Carolina over New Orleans, just based off of how they've been playing to end the season. Yeah. Uh, w- w- with barring the injuries, I should say, barring injuries, because mm-hmm. Carolina, I don't really think they have much of an excuse to be playing how bad they're playing. Saints, it's a bit different. They still, their defense still did a good job, and that's about all they could control given their circumstances. So, yeah. If literally oh. one of three quarterbacks come back for the Saints, I think they're in prime position to win that. Game. That makes sense, but I don't know. I just, I, I, there's something about the Panthers versus Saints that I'm liking over those upsets. All right, you have your fun with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to be. I'm ready to come right back when they beat the Saints 55 to zero. 55. <laughs> what a random number. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um. Seattle versus Detroit. I have Seattle. I got Seattle as well. Um, I, I think it's. I think I actually have Detroit, if I'm being honest. But it's just the fact that I don't trust Detroit to win if I am to pick them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like I want to mess with the vibes. <laughs> and uh, also, I feel like Seattle is just in a place where like they kind of need the a, a win. Just because of how they're just a team that needs to win mm-hmm. right now. I don't think they're going to be playing for draft picks just off of how, you know, their expectations were so high to start the season. At least get yourself to seven and 10. Like, this is embarrassing. I think that's yeah. kind of like the motivation they're going to be having, especially Russell Wilson. Yeah. Um, whereas Detroit, you know, they got the wins they wanted. I feel like, like they're always still going to be playing for a win, but it's not, it's just not going to feel as personal for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I have. I got the Seahawks because even though they lost to the Bears, the the Lions are a worse team than the Bears, and the Seahawks are make they look decent against like bad teams. So I just I just like for what you said, it's more about a ego thing. And I mean, Detroit's Detroit's also I don't know if they clinched the first round or the first overall draft pick, but it'll just if they lose, and I think it would cement them having it. 
They don't uh, because Jaguars have it right now. Lions have a tie, oh, yeah. so they have a better record than the Jaguars. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even I forgot about the Jaguars. Uh so yeah, it's it it'll be better if the Lions just try to lose out. And I mean, if they lose both of their games, it's not a guarantee because like Jaguars are probably going Jaguars to Jaguars need to win one. Yeah. And it, it doesn't look like the Jags are gonna win one. But I don't still, think they care to right now. Yeah. They started looking at coaches already. They they asked they put in a interview slip. I don't know what, why it's called that, but that's what they call it. To put in an interview slip for defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus of the Colts, Ooh. which was who I thought would get taken away from us last season in the last off season, but randomly Nick Sirianni got picked up by the Eagles, which I thought was yeah. random. But you know, yeah. I think he's been doing well recently. Wouldn't you think? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting. But like for that reason, I have the Seahawks. Um, yep. Cardinals for Dallas. I got Cardinals just because uh fuck Dallas. I just don't like I just don't like Dallas. And I feel like Arizona is is going to make a statement game. They need this. it. They yeah. need it. Yeah. Arizona just, needs that win. Because you can't you can't yeah. be losing the good teams, a bunch of good teams at that going into the playoffs. Like that is just not good for morale. You need to get yeah. that solid win. I don't know who they play to end the season, but I mean, it's a divisional opponent, so it could be 49ers, could be Seahawks, could be Rams. I'm not sure who is left to play for them, but it's just got to come somewhere and might as well be against Dallas, I say, especially yeah. in the Dallas home territory. That's got, That would be huge. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I just desperately don't want the Eagles to play the Cowboys in <laughs> – in the, the first round of the playoffs and you Cowboys will. are the number two seed. So the more that they lose or the more that other teams that are in that third and fourth uh, seed win to kind of kick Cowboys out, out of that seed, because I think the Eagles are going to get the seventh seed and the seventh seed plays the second seed. I just don't want to, I just don't want that to happen. So I'm just rooting for any chance for the Cowboys not to play the Eagles in the first round. Yeah. That's, that makes sense. Yeah, that also played. That's, Last one. Uh, Green Bay versus uh, Minnesota. I got Green Bay. They they can uh clinch, not clinch, but get a step closer to that first round by. They are almost standing on an island at that first round by right now. They're twelve and three, and uh everyone else is eleven and four, and Cardinals are ten and five, in the two through fifth seed. So if they just win, then they can further just put themselves on an island for that first run by. I don't want them to have it. Why? Because if they get it, then they're not going to the Super Bowl. It's their curse. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 need to, they need to have some, like, come um, from behind mentality if they want to lose the Super I mean, if <laughs> they want to make the Super Bowl. Because every time they start off really good, they get great position, they end up with home field advantage, and then they get beat by fucking Buccaneers or yeah. 49ers. It's just like, give me a break. I agree. I agree. Um, and then the last little segment of this podcast is because I just go over the transactions of our fantasy league. Brendan added Derek Carr, dropped Gardner Minshew. Uh, Titus dropped Kurt Cousins, added Taysom Hill. Titus added Devontae Parker. Titus added Jimmy Garoppolo, dropped Taysom Hill. (laughs) Instantaneously. um, I was all over the place. It worked out, though. Yeah. Uh, Titus added Dolphins, dropped Packers. I added uh, Cole Komet and dropped Elijah Moore. Titus dropped Michael Carter. Uh, Titus added uh, St. Brown. Uh, he, and Titus dropped Clyde Edwards Hilaire and added Justin Jack- Jackson. And then t- Titus also dropped uh, Devontae Parker. So, yeah, you were just absolutely all over. All of the people I picked up except for Jimmy Garoppolo did great. You were- all of them. Justin Jackson, Amonsi. Amon Ross St. Brown and Dolphins defense had amazing games. Yeah, you really uh you, you chose some good ones, but but you had so many uh transactions the past few days. I really have funny. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's funny to see like the indecisiveness when it comes to like Chantal. it was it, none of it was indecisiveness it was all very decisive but Taysom Hill last second uh got COVID and so I had to drop him for a different quarterback and so it was like almost right after I picked him up so that's what happened there and then with Devontae Parker I was like you know what? I'm gonna keep him on my bench and see like how he does next week let's see if uh, Tua will pass to him. And then he had zero points. He was playing the whole time, but he had zero points. That's Tua weird. Tua was only passing to Jalen Waddle. So I was like, okay, fuck this guy. Yeah, I was debating on picking up Devontae Parker throughout the season, but just never did. Yep. All right. Um. So, yeah, that's the end of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you.